Minneapolis News Station. This is Cron 4 News Weekend. Hmm. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our third live hour of Cron 4 News Weekend. San Francisco fog and the Midwest snow causing flight delays around the country. We're going to update you on that. And with New Year's comes the inevitable resolution. And we're all a traditional bunch, are we not? We all make them. How about a new way to put a resolution into practice? Marriage and family therapist Dr. Tara Fills is going to join us with some sage advice. We should, uh, we should make some bets on who's going to be the first person to uh, forget about the resolution. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Iowa caucuses will yield less than 300,000 votes. Yet every top presidential candidate spending a lot of time and a lot of money there to get those first votes. We're going to tell you why Iowa is a must win for the candidates. Also, our favorite Pooch Compass drops Yay, by. Compass. He's joined by Beverly Ulbrich, uh, the animal coach, to talk about pet adoption, something very important uh, this time of year especially. And someone who likes the idea of pets and pet adoption. Oh, yes. Jan, is that anything and in your movie picks? Oh, I anything always about managed animals? to find a dog. I don't know. <laughs> That's a bad thing to call that, uh, something bad a dog when I love love dogs so much. And so does Dr. Tara Fields. And something else she's going to like, and I hope all of you, is my top 10 movies of the year. We're going to have them all down for you. So some of the... Time now, 921, and still ahead on Cron 4 News Weekend. We've talked about non-traditional resolutions for 208. Why not add adopting a pet to that list? The Pooch Coach is here. She's going to tell us all about groups in the Bay Area who need help giving dogs a loving home. Before we get to that, let's take a live look outside. San Mateo Ooh. Bridge. And we are back on Cron 4 News Weekend 924 this last Saturday of 2007. There you see a very familiar face here on Cron 4 News Weekend. On the left, that is yeah. Compass, of course, with that other guy. Um, and a holiday picture, real, real sign of the season. And, of course, uh, Beverly Ulbrich is here uh, with Compass to uh, talk about a trick that yep. uh, Compass is going to do. Good to yep. see you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you. And uh, tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing with Compass. Well, I, w I thought for the holidays we'd do a fun trick that you can do at home, which is to jump over an object. Um, it's okay. good for beginning for agility. A lot of agility training requires a lot of jumping. So mm -hmm. it's a good start for that. And it's just a fun trick to do. So um, what I did was I learned how to do this when I was a kid. I trained dogs to jump because I figured out that if they taught dolphins this way, which is exactly how they teach dolphins, I mm -hmm. could do it with dogs. So that's what I'm going to do here with show people how to do it. All you need is a common household object, just something that a dog can jump over, like a broomstick. That's what I brought today. And you start with it just on the ground like this. And can we get Compass up? And you just say, jump. Come on. And of course, Compass is like, what? Because she knows what jump is. Come on. OK, good girl. <laughs> and just get them to walk over the object. All right. And then you slowly then raise, you raise it. A little bit. Come on, okay. Compass, back and jump. Come on, jump. Now, OK, good girl. Good. But the problem is, is once you get it up high, yeah. They're going to walk right underneath it. They're not stupid. Oh, sure. So what I recommend is just throw uh, something over it like this. Now, then it doesn't oh. look, it looks impenetrable. So okay. now they have to jump over it. So again, come on, Compass, jump. Good girl. Very good. <laughs> and then you just keep working it up. And especially for agility, you want nice high jumps. Come on, Compass. Oh, over what time jump. period are we talking yeah. about, Beverly? Oh, this, this could be five minutes for a dog that's, you know, been trained and mm -hmm. you know, is used to working with, with but stuff. But over so. what period of time are you raising the, the bar, so oh, to just, speak? Oh, just raise it just a little, a, an inch or so, uh, uh -huh. every, every jump. Just keep raising it for each jump. OK. Um, and so in about five minutes, you should have your dog going over something like that. Um, and, uh, and then eventually what and I do now. And always, again, the positive reward. Yep, what we're talking about exactly here. especially yeah. for tricks like this I always sure. think it's good to give a cookie because it's extra stuff it's not like we're just telling them to sit and behave we're telling mm -hmm. them to do something pretty fancy yeah you are so the other thing I do is this I say jump okay oh and she look goes at over that. my arm as well that's so you, great that makes it easier you don't okay. have to have the object now we understand that we have a, a uh, we're going to raise okay. the bar so to speak <laughs> in, in another way explain yeah. that to us now we're gonna do even a fancier trick which requires compass standing perfectly still for this to allow a little puppy that's her best friend to jump over her so let's do that Dakota can we have Dakota come on baby <laughs> so this is a little nine-month-old Shih Tzu oh, it's her what best a friend cutie hi Dakota and we've okay. trained them to work together Pump it, uh, Dakota sit good girl stay and then jump <laughs> and jump good girl and you give treats to both. Exactly, because Compass had to hold still. That's hard. In fact, we can't even teach. Dakota's a little too squirmy as a puppy. See, if I hold her still, I can tell Compass to jump over her. But she's not going to hold still on her own yet. She's a little too young yeah. for that. But see, I can tell Compass, jump. Compass, ready? Come on, Compy. <laughs> see, it's hard for this because yeah. she, won't, she won't hold still. Jump. Come on, Compass, jump. 
There, there we go. You go. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's cute. Well, they both are, of course. Yeah, yeah. they're both adorable. Yeah. So we want to talk a little bit about uh, animal rescue. Uh, because that is a big part of what you do as well. Tell us a little right. bit about uh, animal rescue for folks who don't know what they do. Sure. What, what rescue groups around uh, the nation do is they go to shelters that are either overflowing um, or they also will pull dogs from shelters that are about to be put down because they have uh, either they had their time up, they've been mm -hmm. there too long, they might have a slight behavioral problem, they might even just be a little sick, or even just old, so they think they're not as adoptable. Right. So mm -hmm. these rescue groups have been formed to go into these shelters, pull these dogs out, get them into um, a foster co home, so temporary care with people and, and that take care of the dogs and, and kind of help rehabilitate them a little bit too. Yeah. And of course, that's where I come in too. I'll come in and help rehabilitate dogs from um, that are in foster homes and um, try to get their behavior problems fixed up for, sure. for adoption. Sure. And get them even trained up, because obviously if the dog can sit and heal and things like that, it makes it easier and more adoptable. If I remember correctly, isn't that how you came together with Compass? Um, no, I didn't come together with Compass that way, but um, but what I do do all the time is is work with um, with a bunch of different groups to, to get the dogs to go, dogs turned over. So okay. what, what I've done is with um, with Rocket Dog Rescue is one of the most popular ones out there now, and, and they especially need some help. Um, the founder of Rocket Dog, um, her house just recently had a fire. Oh no! They lost a couple of foster dogs. It was really sad, and and now she's trying to rebuild. So they especially need some help with foster homes um, right now because because that that was the main intake for all the dogs. It was uh. the first stop was was Paley's house, mm -hmm. and then from there the dogs went out to, to other foster homes. Tell us about Day and Grateful Dog and Rescue. And Grateful Dog Rescue, they were on last November with me with the dog Sissy that we trained, and Sissy got adopted, which is great. Um, and they're another rescue group that pulls from local shelters around here and helps. Um, they do, they're more a little generalized as well. Both of these dogs, t both of these groups tend to get, you know, a lot of the, again, older dogs, dogs that maybe even have disabilities, one-eyed dogs or things like that too. They really try to help from, you know, the dogs that, that normally wouldn't be adopted. Mm -hmm. um, another group is Milo. The um, thing that really differentiates them, they're really very large actually. They have a whole sanctuary um, at Milo. Oh that uh, up in up in Mendocino County uh -huh. where, where they take where dogs. Where they have plenty of room for that. They have that. tiny, tiny do room for the dogs and cats and other animals to roam around. But they also up there, um, well, uh, that's also a forever home for some animals that aren't oh. adoptable. So mm -hmm. again, rather than having to euthanize animals if they're not quite adoptable, they have a home for the rest of their lives to lay out in Mendocino County. So has, there been an in, has there been an increase in the need for, for foster care for, for dogs? Yeah, and that's a big thing we need is the foster homes because each foster home can't have, it's not like they can have 20 dogs apiece. Right? Yeah, they can right. have one or two dogs. So if you're looking, what's, what's great about foster, I like the idea of fostering to adopt. I recommend that a lot to people, which means take a dog in for a couple weeks, a couple months, test them out, you know, help Makes out. In the sense. meantime, you're helping out. You're helping yeah. to rehabilitate, get them used to family life and, and, and get more of a feel for the personality to help for, to find a new adoptee. If you fall in love, great. You can keep them. If right. not, you've helped out a dog and you'll find the, and then until he finds his forever home. And then you can keep doing that and keep looking for your, your magical pet. Beverly, that's a fantastic idea. We want to uh, close by giving your, your website uh, and your phone number, poochcoach.com. And the number is 415-643-3333. Uh, Beverly, as always, it's been great to see you. Yep. Thank you so much. Thanks Thank for bringing Compass and also Dakota. Yes. Sitting perfectly yeah. still and lovely. They yeah, just look. Can, yeah, can you can take can, a wide shot of them? That. What a what a picture. Yeah. What a oh, picture. Look at, look at there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guy. Uh, That's girls, beautiful. Girl. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Yep. Good to see you again. And up next on Cronport News Week, and a check of this morning's top stories, including the fog delays in and out of SFO this heavy travel weekend. It is the New Year's uh, weekend holiday. Plus, the latest from Pakistan as riots earlier plagued the streets after opposition leader Benazir Bhutto's assassination on Thursday. We'll be right back.